you guys, seriously, if you want your skin to look young and if you want to reverse aging, your aging skin and get rid of acne scars, age spots, sunspots, minimize pores and just get a supple, beautiful skin. Look at this. I mean, what do I need to say? Nothing. Like, look at this. I don't need to say anything. You can just see it on my face. Hi guys. Good morning. Welcome to another coffee morning vlog. Let's get into it. For some reason, our society fundamentally we have this fascination with uh, idolizing like dead people right I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend and I hope you guys are doing wonderful I thought to sit down and do my makeup for you guys as I talk to you guys about this new Marilyn Monroe movie called blonde Ah, it's everyone's talking about it and there's a reason everyone's talking about it because everyone can feel the energy everything I'm gonna be wearing is available for you guys to purchase on my store um, elliarkashop.com so the makeup eyelashes eyeshadow lipstick all of that is available the skincare system I'm gonna do my skincare um, so everything's gonna be in the description box down below like what I used and if you guys are interested and you want to purchase it you can and then I have a huge announcement I just reordered my Halloween collection from last year these are like literally my favorite colors because I love like wearing black and you know like weird colors on my lips and it's Halloween month happy Halloween oh my god I'm so excited I mean I celebrate Halloween every day but whatever so it's like October so we're definitely going to be celebrating so these are my favorite like Halloween lipsticks they're velour liquid lipsticks uh they're waterproof you can use these for eyeliners eyeshadows um and lipstick obviously black one is like the perfect eyeliner it's waterproof it will stay it's not gonna it's not gonna smudge it's not gonna get all over your face and then the blue one so this is Hallow's Eve this is blue move and this is Maleficent so these are gonna be restocked probably in two weeks I get so many emails from you guys uh, regarding my summer collection so I'm bringing all of them back we have pagan it's this really I think I'm gonna use this on my lips today and then we have uh, Celestia and Ostra, which is one of my favorite pink lipsticks ever. And then I have these two amazing glosses, Conjure and Chant. Now, Chant gives you like this pinky gloss and they plump up your lips. Again, everything is like organic, VN. You can use it on eyelids, whatever. It's amazing. So I'm really, really excited. These are all coming back probably in two weeks. First of all, I have to say, let's just start from the beginning. Let me just tell you guys, you know, since I went to film school and I'm an actress and I've worked in Hollywood for the past like I don't know 10 years I totally understand like the artistic perspective on it right like I know they're trying to be like uh, artistic but uh, what they did was just exploit her so viciously and I don't know why they're doing this to her and now it makes sense why the lead actress was talking about how the set was haunted and basically Marilyn Monroe was just like not having it. There is no story. So it's not a movie, okay? There is no premise to it. There is no story behind it. You are not seeing, this is, this is it's not even like a fictional movie. It's not even a movie. It just, it's just like these clips and clips of her at different times in her career. Now there's certain parts in this movie that are really cringe and almost almost pornographic there's a scene where she goes to see John F Kennedy and he basically forces her to like give him like oral sex and it's really raw <laughs> and intense kind of like was it really necessary for them to do that like what were they trying to do being a psychic medium being a spiritual person I was really, really offended, and I'm a huge fan of hers. I mean, I have a, I have her book by my bed. I'm gonna try to see if I can zoom it back there. I'm a huge fan. I love her. Um, I think that she was a star seed. I know she was very special. She had such like a childlike quality. She was like a woman child. Uh, she was a Gemini too. And Geminis have a tendency to have different sides to, to their personality. They can be sexy, but then like childish. And I think it confused people because they didn't know how to, how to deal with her. Um, 
you know, a lot of times I, I feel like in the beginning people felt that way about Angelina Jolie. They couldn't, they didn't really understand her. She came across as like really, really tough and, you know, with knives and motorcycles and just kind of like a tough girl. But then she's also like really sexy and sweet and emotional. And she's a Gemini. Um, people don't know how to handle people that have these kind of like different sides to their personality. And I think that's basically where um, that that comes from that they just didn't know how to handle they just didn't know how to handle Marilyn Monroe um, they didn't understand her so they tried to make sense of her because they didn't understand her they try to make sense of her um, in life when she was alive now for some reason our society fundamentally we have this fascination with uh, idolizing like dead people right uh it's like when she was alive she barely had any money or any assets or anything like that but now that she's dead she makes like a billion dollars a year or something crazy like that because there are all these photographs of her were sold a bunch of people you know bought rights to it uh hugh hefner bought the rights to the negatives and her her photos when she um post uh, naked because she needed money and she got paid $50 for it and then those photos is those photos it that Hugh Hefner used for Playboy like launched the Playboy magazine which is really disturbing the fact that Marilyn Monroe didn't get any money for this like she didn't get it you know what this reminds me of like you know artists and painters that are like poor and homeless and then when they die after they're dead their paintings are sold for like a million dollars at art, art galleries. Like, why do we do that? So that's kind of what I want to talk about really in today's topic is like the idolizing dead people. Like we idolize them and we make them so big. We, we turn them into like deities, right? And it's like, what's the point of that? Why don't we share our thoughts and feelings and admiration for them when they're alive instead of breaking them down, instead of trying to, you know, kick them down because that's literally what they did to Marilyn Monroe when she was alive. There's so many things that are wrong with this, with this picture, with this movie. And the reason everyone is freaking out is because uh, they feel, they feel the energy that they were just, that this, I don't know if this was the intention of the film director I really don't know if this is what this was their intention, but it came across very disrespectful to the memory of Marilyn Monroe to have to use her image and name to use her image and name and make her look like some mentally in incapacitated like freak, you know, uh, it didn't make any sense. It didn't really make it make any sense to me. So I'm going to go in with, in my, with my eyeshadow palette. Anyways, it was really, really disappointing to watch it. Now, like I said, I think her performance, you know, was really amazing and she's really, really beautiful and she looks just like Marilyn Monroe. If not, I mean, even like more beautiful than her. Um, she really looked gorgeous. This look was stunning on her. The blonde hair, the makeup, her face is literally gorgeous. Like it looks just like Marilyn. Um, and it was just really disappointing to, to watch to watch it. Now, I didn't watch the whole thing. I just kind of skimmed through it because I just couldn't like stomach it because I'm a huge fan and I don't want to see anything that's like, um, because they, I don't want to see anything negative that is portrayed about her. But let's talk about this idea of that, you know, can you guys, rem can you guys imagine like, you know, she was alive, she was born 1926 and she passed away in 1962, which is again, questionable as a psychic medium, my mind always goes to, cause I'm, I'm you know, I believe in numerology in, in the occults. And um, basically I know in my heart that she was taken out. Um, and when that happens, almost all the time you see the, this very strange synchronicity with the numbers. Like they're born 1926 and then they die 1962. Like they flip, <laughs> they flip the, the date, right? It's like 26, 62. If you flip it, right? Um, so I know in my heart that she was murdered. Uh, it, was not a, it was not a suicide. I don't think she wanted to commit suicide. She was doing well. She had lost a lot of weight. She was doing a movie on all of a sudden she dies it just doesn't make any sense um there's no there's just it's just there's a lot of strange things in regards to her death 
Um, and I think they alluded to that in this in this movie. I didn't watch the end. I didn't watch it like I didn't sit down and watch the movie. I just like skimmed through it because I just wanted to kind of get the vibe for it because everybody was so talking so negatively about it. And I just was trying to figure out like what is so bad about this. And then I watched a little bit and I was like, yikes, this is really, I, you know, it makes me really sad because like Marilyn Monroe doesn't have any like children or any relative, I guess, to kind of like stand up for her. And it just like makes me even more sad for her that, you know, even in death, like she just like is this like orphan and that they're still like taking advantage of her. People are very disturbed by this movie. They don't like how they took advantage of her image and name uh, to just create some strange, bizarre, trippy film about her that has nothing to do with her. Um, it would have been really beautiful if we saw Anna de Armas actually play Marilyn Monroe for it to have a storyline, it would have been so much more powerful to watch her in 2022 for us to kind of have Marilyn back in our lives in 2022 uh, and just like do a really beautiful like story of her life. And another thing that bothers a lot of people is that she achieved a lot and I know that she had to compromise certain things and she slept with people to make it and all that stuff and that still happens in Hollywood but you know she achieved a lot of greatness like she was the first female to start her own um, production company because when she wanted to uh, when she did the film Gen Gen gentlemen prefer blonde like she was getting paid I think like $500 a week or something like that. And Jane, uh, what's her name? Whatever, the, 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 the brunette girl that was in the movie. Uh, it's not Jane Mansfield, it's somebody else, but her name is Jane something. And they were actually really good friends and there was no animosity between them. There was no not rivalry between them or anything like that. But she was getting paid like $100,000. Now they were saying that, basically they were talking about how because Marilyn Monroe was considered like a dumb bimbo blonde, that she didn't deserve to get paid more than that. And the other woman was like a brunette. And she did like more serious roles. So because of that, they they paid her more money. It's like perception. Like basically, it's like a it's like a perception thing. Um, that really really pissed her off, and it. Pushed, pushed her into this notion about wanting to start her own uh, production company, which she did. So they didn't show any of that. They just showed her just being this like mentally ill, like tripping on acid. Uh, the threesome thing was really weird. The nudity was, I just don't understand it. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys that are watching this, if you guys let me know your thoughts down below because honestly it didn't make any sense to me i already talked about that on this channel which is like hollywood actually creates mental health disorders because what people don't understand is like you know when you come here you know you're ambitious you're driven um you want to make it you know you do you go by the book you know you follow the rules i did all that you follow the rules you do everything you're supposed to do and they like they just like mess with your mind. They do that because they want to make you feel insignificant. They want to make you feel like you're replaceable. They want to make you feel like you're not talented. You're not beautiful. You're too short. You're too tall. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You're not pretty enough. Your nose is too big. Your nose is too small. Your lips are too big. Your lips are too small. Your profile is, they give you insecurities. So basically the, the, the cinema, the entertainment industry actually promotes insecurity because like I've been on sets when I was doing, when I first came here and I was doing like a lot of short films and stuff and I'm tiny and I've always been really, really tiny cause I'm like 5'2", like 100, right now I'm like 110 pounds but I was always like 95 pounds, like 100 pounds, which I'm trying to go back to because that's like my, my ideal weight. Um, and anyways, so I used to feel so bad. I used to feel so bad because I would be on set with like a girl that was like a size six or like a size eight or whatever. And they were like taller and like bigger bone, right? And then when they were standing next to me or they had a scene with me, like if I'm in a bikini and they're in a bikini or in shorts and t-shirt laying next to me, they looked really big. So the director, the cinema 
the the AD is the uh, the the DP is the director of photography is the person that's behind the camera filming is called the DP okay and then the direct the director is behind the monitor watching and listening to the scenes right so the DP would come up to this girl that I was in a scene my first like um, short film that I did and he kept like trying to like speak to her kind of like sensitively but it still came across like really offensive like hey can you like sit like this because we can see your stomach hey can you like turn this way because like your hips are too wide because next to me she looked really really big and that like literally it broke my heart because she was so she became so insecure during this like little production we were we were do, filming this for like a week and and yeah it just it really really messed up it messed up her with her head completely and i didn't know what to do and what to say it wasn't my fault that i was skinny you know what i mean it wasn't like my fault that that i'm skinny and I, you know but that's what they do now it's not even intentional but because they're worried about how it's going to look on film they have to you know that's why so many people get plastic surgery that's why you know people get their nose done and and they get their boobs done or i don't know whatever that they they, they do they get their chin done like Marilyn monroe had her nose done she had a chin implant uh there's talks about like back in the day in the 50s they didn't do breast implants but they had the ability to do breast in, in augmentation which was through like syringe like they would put things in your in your breast with like a syringe like to give it I don't know I don't know I don't know I read it somewhere and I read that she had that done I'm not super super positive about that being the case but I know that she had her nose and her chin done because um, a lot of the executives and the CEOs would say that you know she's hot from the neck down but like they didn't like her face because her her nose was big she had no chin and they didn't like her hair her she had like brown hair uh they didn't like her face but then her body was sexy and then so they went and changed her face they changed her hair and then she became Marilyn Monroe you know I mean and then she became obsessed with the image that was created for her because she didn't recognize herself. She didn't recognize herself. She That probably affected her mental health a little bit. It probably affected her mental health as a young person to be like, well, I'm not good enough. Like, um, I'm not good enough. So they're trying to like completely like change me and they did completely change her. A lot of times people who have, you know, major uh, plastic surgery, they don't recognize themselves. and it actually if if the surgery is not successful like if it doesn't look that great and it makes them like not identify with the person that they're looking in the mirror it affects their psychological makeup so again i always go back to psychology because everything is psychology i know a lot of people want to come to hollywood and they want to make it right and they just are just forever enchanted with this notion of being famous and being rich and famous and i get it it's like it's, it looks really glamorous and looks really amazing but then the people that are in the business that are in it uh, suffer greatly uh what they have to do to make it what they have to go through to make it um if you have any integrity or morals you have to push put put it aside you become a product to them and because you are their product they can use and abuse you as much as they can just think about like you know if you when you have a pet you you can do to it whatever you want you know it's your pet right if you want to like smack it or um you're basically like a pet like i didn't realize any of that when i first started because like i love you know i love film and cinema and theater and art and all of that and um i didn't realize that when i was you know pursuing acting and stuff like i didn't really realize that I still live in a society that exploits people people and they want to create a narrative for every person and especially when that person is no longer alive that we see this time and time and time again when they do that um so anyways i hated the film now anna de armis and the rest of the cast even the director they did some really crazy stuff like they basically went to marilyn monroe's house and they happened to film on the same day of her day like it like she passed away on august 4th and they began uh production they began production on the same date like august 4th 
and this apparently created mayhem. Um, they were convinced that Marilyn Monroe was like present and they were talking about that you know the house that they were in was like really really haunted with there were things like flying off the off the wall hollywood should have been a little bit more respectful um they could have made this movie really really beautiful um because once in a lifetime is a role she can't repeat this again um she can't repeat this again right it's like they had this one shot I know she worked for like a year apparently uh, with a di dialect coach to try to speak like her because she has an accent, she's Cuban, um, she fit the part, she was beautiful, she looks like Marilyn, and they fucked up man, they really, they, they messed up. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I want to do my makeup and chat with you guys regarding this film. Um, I gotta make other videos and instead of just sitting there and doing the makeup, I'm wasting time I wanted to record it and then that way you guys can see me put on my skincare products again if you guys have never tried my skincare products definitely check it out you can you can shop on elliarkashop.com if you guys are interested in, in more like high-end like beauty devices and beauty tools you can go to elliarkashop.co my Shopify store uh, I think my Shopify store is linked to this YouTube channel um, these lipsticks that I showed you guys will be coming back probably in two weeks. I'm going to send everybody an email regarding the products that will be available and restocked. If you guys are interested in the products and you want to be up to date, um, oh, I forgot to put my um, highlighter on. If you guys want to be up to date in regards to that, definitely subscribe to my what uh to my website and then if you guys are interested in the high-end quality like you know hair straighteners and um beauty tools uh for your skin and all of that go check out my other website my shopify store ellecosmetics.co if you guys are interested in anything spiritual and coaching healing and readings with me you can go to elliarkit.com i hope you guys enjoyed today's video happy monday and i'll see you guys tomorrow morning for another coffee morning vlog Bye, guys.